We've now got a watershed moment in the Trump prosecutions. Donald Trump has now been hit by a judge with his first sanction after refusing to comply with a gag order and then further explicitly threatened with jail. Here's what happened. A couple of weeks back, amid the $250 million civil suit against Donald Trump in New York, he posted online a photo of New York Judge Angeron's clerk posing with Chuck Schumer, insinuating a personal relationship between the two and identifying the clerk all the way down to her middle initial. Judge Angeron was decidedly not impressed and took a immediate action by imposing a gag order on Trump, saying, personal attacks on members of my court staff are unacceptable, inappropriate, and I won't tolerate it. Consider this a gag order on all parties with respect to posting or publicly speaking about any member of my staff, warning that violations would be met with swift and meaningful sanctions. Since then, Donald Trump failed to delete the post on his website, prompting Judge Angeron in court today to say, I ordered him to remove the post immediately and he said he did take it down. Despite this order, last night I learned the offending post was never removed from a website. This is a blatant violation of the gag order. I made it clear that failure to comply will result in serious sanctions. Now, Trump's attorney said, based on his understanding, quote, this was truly inadvertent. He explained that the post was taken down from Trump's true social network after the judge's ruling and Trump never made any more comments about the court staff, but it appears no one took it down on the campaign website. It is unfortunate and I apologize on behalf of my client. As a result, Judge Engeron said that given Trump's position that the violation was inadvertent and given that it is a first time violation, this court will impose a nominal fine, $5,000, but added, make no mistake, future violations, whether intentional or unintentional, will subject the violator to far more severe sanctions, which may include, but are not limited to, steeper financial penalties, holding Donald Trump in contempt of court, and possibly imprisoning him pursuant to New York judiciary law. That marks the most direct and clear threat from any judge thus far that Trump's actions in the lead up to his court date may very well land him in pretrial detention. And while it's clear that Trump is more than happy to push the limits, Something tells me that he's run out of rope with this particular judge in New York, and he doesn't seem to be faring any better in his other cases. Already in his Washington DC case, he was hit with yet another gag order. Following Trump's outbursts and attacks in the DC case, Judge Chutkin has now prevented him from being able to speak about the witnesses, about the court staff, and about Jack Smith or his prosecution team, which of course raises the obvious question here, what happens not if, but when Donald Trump ultimately violates that gag order? Here's Glenn Kirshner answering that question in our most recent episode of The Legal Breakdown. They discussed what sanctions might be imposed, what might be available, and the following sanctions were mentioned. Uh, financial penalties, home detention, criminal contempt, and revocation of pretrial release. In other words, sitting Donald Trump in a jail cell pending trial. All of those are on the table. I think they are all well within the realm of possibilities. I do think when Donald Trump first violates the, uh, the the pretrial release conditions, the gag order, you know, it will be a lower level punishment, maybe a financial penalty, which of course he'll just grift off his base. He's already fundraising off the gag order, but I think it will pretty quickly escalate up to and including pretrial detention. In fact, John Lauro, Donald Trump's criminal defense attorney, actually said at one point, okay, so judge, what are you going to do? Put Donald Trump in a jail cell? And um, Judge Chutkin just kind of sat back and let that hang in the air. Here's the other important thing um, when we're discussing what might happen when Donald Trump violates the, this, this order. Um, at the very end of the hearing, the judge said, you know, in the event there's a violation, um, the prosecutors can certainly um, file a motion with the court for what's called a show cause order. That is something that requires a defendant to come into court and show cause why he didn't violate a condition set by the court and why he shouldn't be sanctioned for that violation. She said, you know, the, the prosecutors can file that motion. Plus, I will be sua sponte policing this issue. Which now, means she could bring it up herself. Term, she used the term sua sponte, fancy lawyer's term for I am going to initiate it on my own if I see a reason to. I'm paraphrasing what she said. But when she said sua sponte, she was sending a message that I may not even wait for the prosecutors to file a motion or to put me on notice that there's a possible violation of my gag order. I'm going to be looking at it sua sponte. And I would say, knowing Judge Chutkin from having tried murder cases against her back in the day, Donald Trump better not uh, test her resolve. 
And of course, to see more episodes of The Legal Breakdown, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Now, ahead of the inevitable pearl clutching by Trump's allies, it's important to note that this gag order was absolutely expected, given that he had already violated the terms of his pretrial release in Washington, D.C., when Trump was being arraigned for this very case. Here's what the magistrate from D.C. said to him, quote, Your most important condition of release, sir, is that you not commit a state, federal, or local crime while on release. If you were to do so, again, a warrant may be issued for your arrest, your conditions of release may be revoked, and you may be held pending trial in the case. And I hope you listen closely to to the words state crime because here's what Donald Trump did within days of getting that warning. He took to true social and wrote, I am reading reports that failed former Lieutenant Governor of Georgia Jeff Duncan will be testifying before the Fulton County Grand Jury. He shouldn't. I barely know him, but he was, right from the beginning of this witch hunt, a nasty disaster for those looking into election fraud that took place in Georgia. So let's be clear, Trump states in his own post that he knows Jeff Duncan will be testifying, thereby making it clear that he's aware he is a witness, and then he goes on to state that he shouldn't testify meaning that Donald Trump is publicly pressuring a known witness not to testify against him. And that's not only a crime in the state of Georgia, but it's also a violation of the very condition of his release that he expressly agreed to in the D.C. courtroom. And then, of course, he did it again with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, putting out a post on Truth Social arguing that Mark Milley should be executed for treason, meaning this is yet another instance of Donald Trump finding someone who had direct, first-hand accounts of the events that took place leading up to and on January 6th and using his mob boss tactics to dissuade them from testifying against him. So if the Trump team suggests that there's no basis for a gag order, you might want to point them to their client's own words compared with the conditions of release that those words directly violate. And finally, just one more point to rebut the bad faith arguments on the right. This suggestion that any gag order is a violation of Donald Trump's First Amendment free speech rights, it's not. Because the First Amendment is not absolute, and, as a criminal defendant, there are restrictions that can be imposed on his speech. Here's Glenn Kirshner again explaining why the First Amendment can be curbed in deference to the administration of justice and to protecting witnesses. So um, the First Amendment is not absolute, particularly as it applies to somebody who is on release pending trial, because that person is subjected to the conditions set for them by the court to um, protect the orderly administration of justice, to protect the jury pool from being tainted, to protect the witnesses who are expected to testify at trial. And the judge said this over and over again in today's hearing. The First Amendment is not absolute, particularly for somebody on pretrial release. So um, the, the First Amendment claim sounds good, but all sorts of constitutional rights actually can and do yield when you are a charged defendant in a federal felony case on release pending trial. For example, a judge can impose a curfew the judge can tell you, you can't go out of your house after 8 p.m. Well, if you were not in a pretrial status, a judge or a government official could never impose that kind of restraint on your movement. The same holds true with the First Amendment. Um, it yields to the extent that the judge has a responsibility to ensure a free trial untainted by statements made by a defendant. And the Supreme Court has made that clear over and over again. So look, I get why Trump may feel that laws don't apply to him after a lifetime of getting away with it, but he's learning a hard and fast lesson right now that things are changing quite quickly for the guy who lived his entire life as Teflon Don. And I guess that lesson could be summed up as this, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And he's in the process of winning them right now. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.